and welcome back to another vlog today as you guys can already tell by the thumbnail and title we are finally going to be working on mr david's sema so this is a 1997 y33 it is the same thing basically as a q45 except the japanese version had the option for v8 and turbo six cylinder after a long while of mr david waiting to pick it up it is finally home in the garage and parts are stacking up but as you can see coilovers arms all of that we're trying to find a locking nut or locking tool whatever for taking off the wheels and i guess after that we'll just start diving into it yes sir it is actually about like four hours later um there was locking nuts that we could not get off and i do have a set of um these which are for most universal key locks did not work searched the entire car could not find a single one uh, we ended up actually going to what was it tires plus or something yeah. shout out to glass pack shane he tried helping us out um, but they didn't have anything that could get them off so we ended up going to my house and i actually have a stripped lug nut reverse thread tool kind of thing you hammer it on and then it basically grabs it and the biggest size that I had fit perfect. So we were able to get those. The car is hot, but we are back. The wheels are off. And if you're asking what wheels these are, these are Jewalt Mesh. That's what they're called. They're three piece wheels. They did come on the SEMA and I do believe that Mr. David is going to rebuild them uh, down the road. What spring rate are these? 24 in the rear and then 30, yeah, 30 in the front. And these are what, S14? They're, so they're Y33 uh, coilovers, and the front mounts are S13. Which is this, correct? Yeah. For exactly. the front mount. Um, these are silvers. Silvers, what, Pro Max, Low Max? Honestly, I don't even know. I do like silvers. Of course, the small ones, these are the front ones, and these are the back. We just took off the wheels, so right now we are trying to get all of the arms situated. These are GK Tech which they come with the dust boot. We like this, you know, keep the dust out of the little spherical ball joints or whatever they're called. But all of these arms are S14, correct? Yeah, they're all S14. So S14 upper control arm, S14. So I, I believe this is the camber arm. This is the caster. caster arm. Yeah, it brings it sideways. And then this is the toe arm. What's up, buddy? And um, that is about it. So smartest thing that we are going to do is take off one arm at a time, make sure that they are stock length, put them back on, and then after that, we will get to the coilover just because it makes it easier. We'll dive into everything else as we get to it, but first, let's start taking these arms off. And we are back. We finally have one side done. Um, it's about 20-ish minutes later. The longest part was actually just tightening everything. We did take this stuff out of the back it did come with a stock adjustable strut mount which is super sick but with that being said these are what go on the top hats as you can see there is still one right there those two little things and these two little things go right there and then the strut comes all the way across what i ended up doing for this small one back there i actually put this i used my hand and basically i put it on kind of like that, but for the back one. And then I tied a lanyard on this end of it so that, cause I couldn't put my hand in there and use any force and stuff just because this was in the way. I was able to pull the lanyard, well, with both hands and it loosened it. So basically on like this for the back one with the lanyard tied on this side and then I were able to pull and break it loose. But We've got Mr. David working on the driver's side, right-hand drive, so this is the driver's side. And not sure if we're gonna put the strut tower back on. As of right now, I don't think so. But, you know, we'll see if it drives any different, handles any different, I mean, it's gonna be low, it's gonna be a lot more stiff, and it's gonna, well, probably have some camber and some wheels, so. We are gonna play it by ear. I'll show you guys if we have any issues with this side, but we did take off all of these arms one by one take one off replace with the adjustable take one off replace with the adjustable we made sure that they are equal length of course this one isn't because well we haven't touched it but putting it back on the car 
We did all the arms first with the stock suspension just because it allows it to hang a lot lower. It's easier to get to the arms. As you can see right now, well, with the coilover up, it raises the entire hub, makes it harder to get to the arms. So I'm gonna help David real quick. We're gonna get those off and well, we will catch you guys in just a couple. It up for nothing. Oh, yeah, we're, ma we're maxed out. So we're gonna have, you have wood? We can put on wood. I might. Oh, Yo, she's kind of low right now, not gonna lie. Oh, well, yeah, you're good. Yeah, so we're just going to Walmart, right? Yeah. Hey, man. This is my brand new car. <laughs> Empire, that's what it is. Wait, get a picture. I need it. Pose up, pose down, baby. So there it is. You get the angles right? I took a video. You get the tune in? Yo, to the camera, bro? That's fire. All right, well, we are back. Brought it down the street to the Wawa. Of course, the rear is just done. We didn't want to start on the front today. One, we spent hours trying to get the lug nut off as well as uh, getting tools and such. And we're just over it. We're stinky. And, well, we're enjoying the toot ski. So tomorrow, I think uh, it's going to be the full knuckle, hub, angle kit, coilovers, tie rod ends. Yeah, front lit brakes, lit front brakes. brakes. The whole shebang so we're gonna end it here so we're not talking for a million years and um well let's get to it and welcome back for what is this day three no day two day technically day two we were actually working on this uh last night which i didn't vlog just because we wanted to start getting apart one of the fronts we weren't sure if we were gonna have to press off the knuckles um we were also doing what is that called a tie rod end links as well as tie rods so we'll show you everything on the other side but we did um, run into some issues yesterday so I'm very glad I did not vlog hopefully today we are going to address that but mr. man actually went down to South Florida and picked up some absolute heat some absolute heat which we were unboxed for y'all right here or you want to grab a box show them in the in the sunlight but check out the heat, my boy. I haven't seen him in the light. I yeah, this is it's funny. He actually saw them what last night at, in the dark when you yeah. picked them up. It's late. Triple chrome to the dome. Okay. These things are spicy, and obviously the SEMA is two tone. The white is super super mint and pearly on this car, and well, the bottom paint looks absolutely immaculate. So, I think that these are going to go absolutely bonkers. And maybe tonight we'll be able to test fit. So we shall see. But time to hopefully finish up uh, this side real quick. We only have a couple things that we need to try out. And well, after we are done with that, we'll move to the other side, bring you guys along, and who knows, maybe get this thing on the floor today. Oi, bro, what are you doing? Yeah? <laughs> 
All right, so here we are. Uh, the GK Tech lower control arm and knuckle angle kit is all together. The coilover is bolted up and we maxed it out, uh, at least for the top camber. So I'm gonna go over a couple quick things. Um, first of all, it is a 34, 36 knuckle bolt. Oh, it's 32. Oh, it is 32. Um, so what you're gonna do to swap over the hub is take off the dust cap. Um, the knuckle will be here with the studs and it's a 32, boom, straight off. And then I just hit the back kind of right here where the knuckle is to break it loose and it came straight off. Um, the other thing I really want to harp on is please make sure you know that there is a left and right lower control arm as well as knuckle. So we actually mix matched everything um, it is nighttime now because we made the mistake of putting on the lower control arm that was the wrong one but we put on the right knuckle so long story short uh, this lower control arm is going to be for that side so it is going to fit like that on the vehicle but there is right here where the knuckle attaches you can see that that joint is angled up um, so that's gonna allow you to basically put the knuckle inside. You're gonna be able to achieve that negative camber and also have the adjustability. It's tapered on the bottom of this, so you know which one is the bottom. Uh, so, I mean, you could just go off that if you would like. And then when you're choosing the knuckles, make sure you know that there are two bolts, uh, two holes for the caliper bolts here and the tie rod and goes right there. So you can kind of just bring it over to whatever side it is. Obviously that's wrong because the tie rod goes on the left side, which we did not put that together yet. We haven't adjusted the camber on the lower control arm. So we are not sure which end link size that we're gonna go for. That's smallest, that's medium. And we put the longest one on because we plan on extending that lower as much as possible and coming over to the passenger side mr david is wow. going to be taking all of this apart 19 bolts on the back of the caliper um 19 and 17 for the lower control arm as well as the tension rod which is going to be up front for the tension rod nut you're actually going to have to move the first uh layer of like skid plate plastic but that's super easy and well, that's pretty much it. And then I think these are like 13 or 14. Um, taking everything apart is pretty easy. And then of course, for this dust boot, you're gonna have to get a little flathead, hammer it in there until you can pop it off. So tomorrow we are actually gonna finish the side. We're gonna take this apart. It's getting late and well, the kiddos are back to school. So we're not gonna be those neighbors to keep everybody up and well, we're kind of tired again. So longest coilover install ever, but uh, slowly obtaining the tools that we need and well, packing up Mr. David's toolbox. So um, we're gonna take this apart. I'll show you guys in a little bit and then catch up with you in the morning to tie everything back up, as well as showing you how to replace the actual tie rod along with the tie rod end and put on the full kit. And welcome back to day Four, I believe this is, or during the vlog, technically three. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over some things real quick uh, before we jump into it. Uh, David is not here, so your boy is trying to finish up. We've got the angle kit that I just put together, like I mentioned earlier. Make sure that you've got this end piece angled up uh, to allow the knuckle adjustability this way, and make sure that your tie rod is on the correct side because the knuckles are not the same. Real quick. Before we dive into throwing everything back together, um, I just wanted to show you guys how to get these tie rods off. <clears throat> because I know some of you will have some questions. So of course, there is this dust boot on it. On this side, closer to the steering rack, there was just some wire. And on this side, well, there was just a little clamp. <laughs> Easy to take off, just yanked it out the way. Right here is where your tie rod kind of bolts to the steering rack. And if you can notice, I've got little pieces flared out right there. Um, well, this part is square and there's four little pieces that basically grasp onto it and hold it kind of like a cotter pin or something, but 
doesn't go through the actual thing. So I bent those back just with a um, screwdriver and a little hammer. And then I actually took, I took a crescent wrench, luckily as big as this goes, fits perfectly over this square and broke it loose, wasn't too hard. And then I'm just using some vice grips on the ball part to get it spinning and it comes straight off. So you can actually leave the tie rod end because there are new tie rod ends with the actual kit. And there you go. We finally have this side together. Um, it was kind of just bolt together as you would expect. We ran into a couple issues, so that's what we're here to talk about today. So we ended up changing the tie rod end links to the shortest ones possible. And as you can see, it is still towed in, towed in, um, as well as the other side. We did make sure that the steering wheel was as straight as possible. Um, just in case, you know, one side was really towed in, one side was really towed out, and we had to adjust it from there. But the luckily, the good thing about these tie rods are that one, they're extended, but they're also threaded almost all the way until the steering rack. So we're gonna be able to shorten those. Um, the plan is probably shorten them like an inch and a half. And then from there, we can either use the smallest uh, adjustment piece on the tie rod end link, or we go back to the bigger one and get the alignment straight. So with that being said, we are not gonna be able to put the vehicle on the ground today. Also because this is, well, as high as the vehicle will allow us to go. The wheels that David has obviously does not have tires on them, but the wheels that we would be moving the vehicle on, they've got some big beefy tires, um, no stretch. I mean, these really are not that beefy. Even if they had a bit more stretch, they'd still kind of be about the same profile, but we cannot get them on the car. So these are the super low max struts, correct? Yeah. The, basically the smallest strut that you can get for an S14, right? Not even for um, a Q? Actually, Y33, but it's just the front lower mounts that are S14. Okay, so, so they, they are Y33 um, struts, but maybe because of the angle kit, also helps lift the hub and all that stuff. Um, not quite sure, but we are gonna talk to Silvers. I know that they're pretty good about letting people mix and match parts, especially because, well, we haven't even driven on them or anything, and well, if we can swap them out, at least get one that's, I don't know, maybe even four inches, five inches longer. At that point, we could set it to the height we want, be able to go lower or be able to raise it, whether it's just to move it or put it on a trailer, or whatever it goes. But um, with that being said, it is pretty much all together. This side, well, is like, I don't know. There's still, you gotta mess with the toe and stuff. It was a pain and we do notice that the caster is also off. Um, you can kind of tell right now, but when you actually have a wheel on it, you can really tell just kind of where the middle of the wheel is. So I think we are going to try and have like KM tires or somebody mess with the caster. It is all those stacking nuts and stuff. I said I would show you guys, but I, really have no idea how to do it. Um, I tried my best. I did take off the knuckle and just try to put the lower control arm by itself together um, and attach it to the rear, the front subframe on the passenger side and I still really couldn't do anything with it. I wanted to try to get as much front caster as possible because we noticed that it was already rear castered. So by stacking those, I kind of wanted to, you know, Get as much front caster as I could there so that if we had to adjust it back, we could. Um, being that once you extend this, it's gonna move the caster back. But I know we did not get to get this car on the ground. I mean, you guys saw it on the ground with the rear lowered and well, happy with the rear, but the front we are going to have to um, adjust. So is there anything I missed that the people might wanna know about the kit? Oh, there is different options. You gotta get, um, what was it? You gotta get them extended like 20 millimeters for low cars. The lower control arm? Yeah. Like the actual, um, I guess it's the, what mounts to the actual knuckle. It's extended 20 millimeters. So the part that I showed you guys that is angled up for the knuckle, um, not only to help with some front camber, but you, they, you got the option to get them extended. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. So on top of being adjustable from the lower control arm or from that side, it's also already extended to kind of kick the bottom of the knuckle out. But 
I think other than that, you guys have seen the new wheels. Uh, you guys saw the rear arms and coils installed and eventually we will get some content on changing the fronts. If we do end up getting new struts, then we can show that and maybe the brakes at the same time if that stuff comes in. Um, we do have bigger brakes. What are these brakes for? Uh, Z32 brakes. Z32 brakes as well as some beautiful, beautiful calipers. So those should be installed hopefully here soon because we're waiting on the brake line parts is that correct up yeah. front um, but other than that we adjusted a little bit up on the top hat just max that camber out uh, kicked out the bottom just a little bit to see if it would help us with caster and it helped a little bit but not to where we want it so I hope you guys found this uh, content enjoyable and knowledgeable. If not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what we missed. If you have any questions, uh, whether that you have or other people might have, uh, throw those down below and I will get back to you guys and answer as fast as possible. But now the SEMA parts are finally starting to stack up. So maybe when we put the wheels on, when we get tires for those and do the front brakes, adjust the struts and all that good stuff. Well, we'll throw you another video. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Later.